No, we're happy to be here. Um, finally, it's here that we can get started. It's been really an exciting time for Laker fans, Laker Nation, since the signing of all the free agents, of course, headlined by the greatest player in the world, LeBron James. But uh, today was amazing just to see all of them together playing pickup game. Oh, my goodness. It's, 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 it's something to watch. You know, you forget. I've watched LeBron from, of course, afar. And I've been at many games. But to watch him in the gym is a whole different thing, how much he makes everybody better, but also how he raises everybody level of play. And uh, his basketball IQ and his leadership ability. It was all on display today. And uh, same thing with Rondo. You know, you, the guy can create shots for, for his teammates, and he's smart. And uh, it was just really a joy to watch all our players just go up and down and play. Uh, we're excited and uh, uh, can't wait to Monday media day, but also Tuesday when we actually get started. So Irvin and Jeannie and I were up in her office the other day just sitting around. Uh, she's got a little coffee table, couch, and chairs just talking about the season. And uh, she does such a great job, Jeannie, of uh, picking our brains and kind of listening and giving us feedback. And, and you know, she said at one point, you know, what, what's the trade of this team? You know, and Irvin and I had talked about it before. But this group of guys is, is, is as competitive as you can imagine. And what I told Jeannie that day, I said, Irvin and I were talking about how the, the, the gene of being a competitive individual is something that gets multiplied, almost like compounded interest when you have competitive guys in the gym. So it's not two plus two plus two equals six. It's two times two times two equals eight. It, it has this effect of just growing exponentially. So what we've seen early in just the guys playing um, pickup ball in the gym, you know, when you have obviously LeBron, an ultimate competitor, guys like Rajon Rondo, Lance Stevenson, even our young guys, Brandon Ingram, Kuz, just the, the gene of being competitive starts feeding off and the, the, it just it, it blows up exponentially. So that's what we are particularly excited about. And Luke, as the leader and coach, is an is a ultra-competitive guy. It's, I've, I've said before that's one of his strongest um, attributes as a coach is he's a fiery competitor. Um, and so that's what, what we're really excited about and excited for our Lakers fans and all of you to experience um, when camp and games begin. Yeah. I'd like you to talk about I'd like for you to talk about the level of excitement and anticipation you have as you're about to open camp. And also you mentioned it a little bit a little while ago. If you can go into a little bit of depth on the positive influence you've seen on your young players because of LeBron. Well, I think that, you know, <laughs> uh, I haven't been this excited in a long time. I think that uh you know, when you Look at our roster, one through fourteen, and and the, the the talent that we have, and the coaching experience of Coach Walton and his staff. I think that uh, is is we should be excited. We brought in champions too. People forget about that when Javale, Rondo, and of course we know what LeBron has done. They've all won championships, and that's what our young players needed. They needed to, not only for us to bring in veterans, but the right type of veterans that could teach them and lead them and help them understand how to prepare for a season, for a game, and then hopefully uh, later on in April, how to prepare for the playoffs. So um, these pickup games, we've seen that. We've seen um, the level of play. I mean, they are going hard. It's, it's physical. It's tough. It's trash talking. It's, it's, it's just a lot of fun. 
and uh, also a lot of teaching at the same time. LeBron is out there teaching in pickup games. Rondo is teaching in pickup games. JaVale, is, JaVale blocked cool shot today and told him, hey, next time you better come in and dunk it. You shouldn't have let me block it. And so a lot of that is going on that didn't happen before. So it's really great to see uh, these young guys getting a chance to learn from champions. And um, and then, you know, LeBron comes in and, I mean, he's in, already in mid-season form and shooting fadeaways and three-pointers from almost half court. And you're sitting there saying, man, thank God we signed him. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just beautiful to watch. But at the same time, Rondo didn't want to play with him. He actually wanted to play against them, and they were going at it. It was just truly a blessing to see these guys help our young players so now Kuz knows how to prepare because he sees LeBron. Rondo will help Lonzo go to another level. And we were both, my main thing this off season was also how do we get somebody to mentor Lonzo? And we got the right mentor because Rondo is just, his basketball IQ is off the charts. He's been incredible and he's in such great condition too. Lance Stevenson is amazing. He's been, um, just uh, being mean and physical out there. So nobody gets an inch with him. And again, it's teaching our young guys how to play a physical style of basketball, yet still not getting in foul trouble. So it's all these guys have been able to really come in and really affect our team in such an incredible way. But it starts with, of course, LeBron James and uh, his aura and his winning attitude and the way he goes about his business. I mean, I, you know, you see him on the court, but also in the weight room, he's the same way. I mean, it's just, just amazing. So it's, it's, it's been fun for me, and I'm excited. Just to piggyback off something Magic said to kind of give you guys a further insight to the reality of this mentorship and the leadership of these older players or more veteran players. Um, the other day, great idea. Um, it was Magic. Rajan and Lonzo in the film room and we put on the Pelicans Lakers game from last season so you had Rondo leading the Pelicans you had Zoe it was a great game it was like 128 124 it went down to the end and I had set it up by saying okay Rondo take us through as you have the ball and as plays are unfolding just narrate you know, what's going on, what's going on in your mind, how you're seeing things unfold, how you're leading your team. Then we asked Zoe to do the same thing. Hey, what are you thinking in this moment? How are you setting up this player? And then you got the best point guard that's ever played the game on, layered on top of that. So if that was a pay-per-view event, I think it would have sold a million <laughs> tickets. But it was amazing to be in that room and to hear these three point guards talking about the game and breaking it down. And, and that's just one example of the thousands of things that are going to go on in camp throughout the year um, where these guys all become better. Hey, Magic and Rob, pace was so important to you last year and led the league for most of the year. You know that LeBron can run as much as he wants to, but has been typically in the middle of the pack because he's so good in the half court. How do you see that squaring it? How much do you want LeBron to, to run? How much does he want to? How do you think that all fits together? Well, I don't think we're just talking about one guy because we don't want his usage to be high, like he has to just have it all the time. You know, we're, we're going to run. Whoever gets it, we're gone. We're gone. We're not, we're not looking for one player. I mean, Rondo can run the break. Lonzo can run the break. Lance can take it. Um, I mean, B.I. can take it. I mean. Uh, Michael can take it, and we've seen that in the scrimmages as well. I mean, so we got a number of ball handlers. That's that's how we built this team, and so we just won't uh, uh, rely just on LeBron, you know, making all the shots for people in terms of creating the shots for people or himself. We want him also to play off of it, and uh, but that's that's on Luke. I'm, I'm not here to tell you how the offense is going to go because that's not my job and that's not Rob's job. Luke will handle that situation and he's already been thinking about ways to utilize uh, not just LeBron but everybody. So 
but, but let him explain that. And so we're just here. Uh, we just put the team together. We had so many meetings uh, during the season. And then, uh, and I told you this, and, and I wasn't lying, I, I think our wives were happy once free agency got here <laughs> because we were on the phone so much during the playoffs. Before the game, <laughs> halftime, and after the game. My wife was saying, will you let him go to sleep? And I, but we built this team based on what we saw in the playoffs. And it was very important that we watched every series and saw the way that the game is going today. And, um, you know, we both was just – the good thing about Rob and I, we're, we're always thinking the same thing. We're always – what do you think? And then he'll say, blah, blah, blah. I was thinking the same thing. And it's really good that we're in sync with one another. Yeah, to answer your question, Mike, and to add to what Irvin just <clears throat> shared, I think what we saw in the playoffs and how we wanted to build this team, if you use a, a, a sports car analogy, since we're in L.A., the capital of sports cars, but we wanted this team to have a lot of engine thrust and not just from one player. Um, and I think – as he just pointed out, you can go down our list. We have playmakers and guys that can get it and not just come at you, but come at you with force. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it's LeBron, it's Rondo, it's Zoe, it's, it's Brandon Ingram, like Michael Beasley, Kyle Kuzma, Josh Hart. Any of these guys that get it, if they're coming at you, you've got decisions you've got to make. And so that was one of the components and one of the things we had to focus on is not – pace is an overused word. I think every – you know, team in the league is saying, we want to play with pace. We wanted to have thrust with our pace, like strength. Uh, gentlemen, right over here. Uh, question for you about uh, the center position uh, right here. Uh, you definitely have multiple veterans at, at, every, at each guard spot, at the forward spots. Uh, and of course, you brought in JaVale, but he hasn't played significant, like 30 minutes a game or so, re at least in the last few years. And you don't, behind him, you don't have that same kind of veteran presence. I'm wondering, um, is it because of multi-position basketball? You guys have stressed that, where maybe the tradition of a true center, maybe that's not as much of a priority. Can you kind of explain where you are on the center position? Oh, we're very happy. Because, again, you know the game has gone to, there's not a true center playing back up. And we got one of the best going to be there. But I'm going to let Luke do all that. He, he's a decision maker. But well, we're excited. And... Um, we, we feel we have uh, two players at every position, a, the starter and then a backup to that person. And so we're excited about it. And uh, you'll see, I'm sure, he, uh, Luke using different combinations. But again, I can't tell you that. That's up to him. Um, but, um, you know, um, Michael will be able to play multiple positions, you know, and uh, he's shown that, again, out here. Uh, every single day. And so, uh, uh, JaVale, man, we haven't had a JaVale for a long time around here. The guy just blocking shots. Kuz thought he had one today, and, and he said, mm-mm. And I'm talking about he came from the corner to get it. He just wasn't sitting down there. He went and grabbed that shot and was just unbelievable to see how active he is. And also our pick and roll with him changes too because they can throw the lob up to him. So uh, we're not sitting here saying that JaVale got to play 30 minutes, but I don't know how many minutes he's going to play because that's not my decision. And so we'll let Luke decide minutes and who starts and all that. That's, that's not what we do here. We just put the team together and we get out the way. Yeah, I think, Eric, to answer your question, we have <clears throat> seven or more guys that are 6'9", six, 6'10", six, or above. So <laughs> I think that's, you know, plenty of size and versatility for today's game. In fact, Michael Beasley walked in, Magic and I were standing at the door, and he said, man, just being in here, he's like, I haven't seen a team with this length since really the championship team where it was Gasol and Bynum and Odom and all of this length. Mm -hmm. and, he, and so we, we uh, as the game is moving to be more positionless, we don't even really talk about center or right. point guard or two. It, it's a positionless game, and we have a versatile, long roster and adequate size for sure. You guys have, have both talked about competition. You've talked about, and obviously there are expectations this year 
to go into the playoffs and then perhaps deep into it. How do you philosophically balance that, those things, with the, the player development that still needs to happen with the young guys? Well, that hasn't changed. I mean, uh, player development has gone on. And I want to really give our coaches a, a really a pat on the back. They've done a wonderful job with player development. They're here every single morning working with the players. They're, they've been assigned different players. But again, Luke can go into that more than I can. But every time we look, they are working out guys. Every guy on our team has improved. And um, it's um, credit to first the player for wanting it, and then also uh, credit to the coaches for understanding what that player needs and making them work at it. Um, and it's not just the young guys. You're going to see a different KCP. Uh, Rob did a wonderful job of explaining diet, and but I'll let him talk about KCP because he looks like a total different guy and playing like it too. And so um, we asked everybody to change, and they have. Coos is a different guy. Man, man, I mean, <laughs> uh, he, 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 he got mad because he wasn't in the top 100. So I'm glad they didn't put him in the top 100 so he can keep working hard. But it's that type of drive that we have with these players. And so uh, we've been really happy with player development. And it goes to the players, but also to our assistant coaches and the job that Luke is doing. So uh, hats off to those guys, because they've been working them all summer. I think of this story, you know, I don't know if it's an ancient tale of old, but of the, you know, young kitten that's running around the jungle and uh, it sees a bobcat and says, well, it's a bigger cat, it must be a lion. And it starts mimicking the bobcat and it thinks it's become the king of the jungle. A year later, along comes a male lion and the little cat's like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize what a lion's roar was until I saw and heard it. Now I know how to become a lion. Well, in terms of player development, I think there's no better way to do that than by exposing our young core to today's greatest player that is today's hardest working player too. Then they see what it takes to be great. It's one thing to hear stories, it's one thing to watch tape, but to be in the gym every day um, with guy with LeBron in particular and guys like Rondo that have won championships and done it at a high level. There's no better way to develop um, players than that. Uh, oh, hold on a second. Sorry. Any general manager in the league would have <laughs> told you a story like that and brought it home like that. Man, I even <laughs> learned something. I, you taught me something today. You Boom. taught me something. That was good. All right, my man. Go ahead. <laughs> Backing off of the idea of improvement and, and seeing the young core kind of change and, 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 and get better, what have you seen from Lonzo so far? Well, the good thing about Lonzo, he started early. He was uh, in the weight room. We asked him to get stronger. And, uh, man, he put in the time. And then um, the one thing that we were really blown away with is that he wanted to watch film. And so it can't be us asking him to do that. Mm -hmm. He had to want it for himself, and he wanted to sit and watch film with me and with Rob. And we had, I don't know, four, three or four sessions. And then Rob just told you what happened with the, you know, all four of us, with Rondo included, and Lonzo. So it was really wonderful to be in another film session with him. But he's starting to understand that he has to be better. But he, he understood that right after the season. And we explained that this is going to be, you know, the most important offseason. And um, while he could be on the court, his shot looked great. Um, um, he, he, he's going to be ready to have a breakout season uh, and build on what he did last season because it was only a couple of things he had to do better. And, and so that was drive it to the basket and finish and get the mid range in terms of really the, um, 
um, get his shot where he's on balance. It's not his shot. He just has to be on balance. And I let the shooter, Rob, <laughs> tell you more about that because Rob really talks about that with him because Rob was a shooter his whole life. So I'm the assist man, so I talk to him <laughs> about turnovers and things like that. But anyway, I think that it, it's you, I'm excited for Lonzo, and um, uh, he's going to be fine. Yeah, I think <clears> – <throat> Lonzo and I were sitting out. We have a little outdoor eating area the other day, and um, I think all of us have had, you know, our own life journeys. And and sometimes in life, you don't fully appreciate something until it's gone, right? We've all had stories like that in our in our life. And for him to go through this uh, off season where he's had several months where he couldn't be playing five on five. Um, I think he's got this deeper sense of appreciation about the game and what it means for him. I can just see it in his spirit and in his energy. And then he has worked um, to just add more fluidity to his shot. You can see the spin and kind of the release where it is. Um, he knows that he's not going to just be called upon to do one thing, push the ball and pass. But he's going to, with all our multiple ball handlers, he's going to have to at, at some times be ready to play off the ball mm -hmm. and catch and shoot. So he has worked hard on that. And we've seen advancements in all things. So um, in terms of the official update um, on his sort of medical status, you know, the news has been great. Um, he's he's been 100 percent cleared by our medical staff um, to return to full basketball activity um, because he hasn't played NBA five on five for four or five months. There is with any player that has surgery, a progression to come back. So he started that progression. He will participate um, in our training camp and everything other than um, five on five contact drills at the beginning, but we'll progress along that continuum and we'll just take it a day at a time. There's no way to predict the future, but the fact that he's been 100% cleared and is feeling great um, is good news. Uh, oh, sorry, I just had one more. Uh, Magic, do you expect to be in Space Jam 2 when that comes out? Um, yeah, you know, they have the budget for me. I'll be in it, you know. <laughs> you know, my quote is kind of high, though. So, no, I think that uh, I admired Michael in the first one and uh, look forward to seeing what LeBron would do with the second one. I'm going to go back to a more serious topic a little bit. <laughs> is it? <laughs> But I w actually, I'll start. I have two questions. Um, what, do you, what do you think of both of you? Of LeBron has so many projects that he's working on right now. The shop, from from the shop to Space Jam Two. What have you thought about all of those? And are you going to watch? Are you have you been watching? Yes, and I'm happy that he uh, um, has a successful company, and he has great partners in uh, Rich Paul and Maverick. They they um, they do a wonderful job of uh, really bringing LeBron uh, different opportunities, and and then LeBron is such a smart individual, and he knows what he wants and how he wants it, and so uh, uh, I'm cheering for him to be the most successful athlete in the hist in history, right? And so. Um, but I'm also cheering for him to lead us back to the promised land. So uh, I can't wait for us to get started and uh, start building uh, and uh, bringing this team together. My, my, I know we will struggle in the beginning because so many guys don't, haven't played with each other, don't know each other and that whole thing. But as I was t talking to Luke, uh, both of us were, you know, we said, don't worry about if we get off to a bad start. Uh, we've seen that with LeBron going to Miami. We've seen that when he came back to Cleveland. You're going to struggle because there's so many new moving parts, but uh, eventually we're going to get it, and we're going to be really a good team. So uh, I'm happy that LeBron is building his brand on and off the court, and he will be the model for these young guys and is the model for these young players to – learn how to dominate on the court and be a champion, but also how to dominate off the court. I'll just say this quickly and let you get your other question. Um, 
I think that one of the fundamental pillars of what we've wanted to build here is to be player focused and player centric. And with things like our Lakers genius talks, we get so excited when our players are pursuing their interests and passions away from the court. It's not just, it's, it's more than just being a basketball player. And I think uh, LeBron is showing that he stands for that and that your interests and your future and what you do with your life can be limitless. And uh, that's an inspiration to, to, to all of us, but something we encourage for all of our players. Um, my second question is, is there any concern that Lonzo could miss regular season games? It's impossible to predict the future when you're talking about coming back from an injury. So I wouldn't really know how to answer that other than we feel great about where he's at and we'll just take it one day at a time. Um, Robin, Magic over here. What's up? What's going on there, <laughs> sir? Up, you guys signed some, shall I say, interesting characters, personalities over the summer from my perspective. Um, how do you think that's going to work together on the court, off the court, and are there any concerns on how they make all that work with all those different guys? No, no concerns. And, and we love that they all are different individuals and they bring something different to the table. We needed some grittiness. We needed some toughness. We needed somebody to come and be upset that, you know, uh, somebody had a defensive lapse or, or somebody got by them. Um, we, we, we love everything that everybody brings to the table, right? And we've been seeing it out here every single day. So, um, you know, some guys had different things happen in their path, but so what? Rondo's still a champion, right? And, he, and you saw what he did for New Orleans last season. And so we're happy to have him. Lance has played excellent basketball last season, you know, with his team. And so didn't have a problem, wasn't a problem. We're excited to have him because he's been great out here. Uh, again, you know, so we don't care about, you know, what has happened in the past. All we care about what happens when you put on that purple and gold. They know what they need to do. They know, they know how to act as a professional, but we, we don't want nobody to change. I want to see Lance shake it up, and I, I want that because that's who he is. Michael Beasley, come on, do your thing. Uh, we're not going to change a guy, but at, at the same time, we just want them to play team basketball, uh, run the plays that Luke want them to run, on and on and on. But we're not concerned. We, if I was concerned, I wouldn't have signed on them. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to have each and every one of them, trust me. BT, yeah, just to, to, uh, to add to what Magic was saying, it, not only are we not concerned, but it was purposeful. You know, Magic is a basketball historian. I like to, to really study the past, too. And if you look at the highly successful and championship teams, they have multiple personalities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can give one example to go back to the, uh, the Bulls era, Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman. There's different players of different personalities that add something to the chemistry um, for teams to be great. And there were things that we looked at that the elite teams had that are in front of us. And knowing that our road to a championship is through every team, that we had to bring certain character traits to the team. So each of the guys we signed had a purpose to that. Um, and we feel good about it. And they're very competitive. And that's what we want. Uh, hey, nobody says anything about Draymond, right? You know, but but he's very competitive, right? And he's going and he's the uh, a key to what Golden State does. Now Come that on. Uh, hey, now that LeBron has been in the building and you've gotten to spend probably a good amount of time getting to know him, is there something you've learned about him that maybe you wouldn't have expected to know? No, it's just beautiful to watch him play. It's just. Um, it's just fun how he rallies everybody. You know, he's like a magnet and everybody just, it's, it's just beautiful to see him think three or five, four plays ahead and you get to just see it. Uh, <laughs> there was a play today and uh, 
Kuz, everybody knew it was game point. So LeBron got it, and we saw him just saying, oh, I'm about to take Kuz. I'm going to get to my spot, and then I'm going to launch this three-point right in his face. Sure enough, he came down, gave a little fake, and then Rob said, why you go for the fake? And Kuz was like, <laughs> he didn't know what to do. And LeBron just pulled it all net. But that's the greatness of LeBron. And he's going to, again, rub off on a Kuzma. When you play against him every single day, you get better. Michael Cooper made me better. I was going against the best defensive player in all of basketball every single day. He made me better. Our, play, our, our, our practices were competitive when I played, you know? So that made us com compete every single night, 82 games. That's what we're looking for from this team. And so, no, he's just special. He's special, yet just a regular guy. And then Rob was telling me about, we talked about it when we got to the office, how you want to go into him and Rondo just sat on the sideline and we're talking basketball after yeah. we got done. It was just amazing. Actually, I think the biggest thing for me is to see the reverence he has for the game. I think I, I had mentioned earlier, you know, he had his first time in the building and it was just something, it's like a moment you'll never forget where he, he comes in early, 6, 6.30, and he was actually waiting for um, – some of his, the coaches and different things to arrive. And I could just see he sat in a, a folding chair underneath all the banners in this unbelievable facility. And who knows exactly what was going on in his head, but you have to think he was reflecting on the history of the Lakers and the, the great players and the championships and the respect he had for all of the numbers that are retired uh, on the wall and just thinking now it's his turn to etch his name in this storybook franchise. Um, so just the reverence for the game, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and then the little moments where, again, like today they were just scrimmaging and, and you know, Rondo was talking to a player and he sat, sat down and then LeBron was like, well, what? And he sat down and they started having this basketball com conversation that was like, you know, two brilliant people just talking about things that common people wouldn't even understand. And those moments, I think, when you realize what a savant he is of basketball, that uh, you just appreciate who he is. Mm -hmm. Last question. Uh, Magic, Rob, you've, Magic, you've deferred a couple times to Luke. Uh, you mentioned Luke a couple times here of how he's going to utilize these players. And, um, and you've also preached some patience early on because there's a lot of new pieces. A lot of people are wondering how Luke is going to make this all work. I was wondering what have you seen from Luke this summer and what do you guys expect of Luke? I mean, this is his third season as head coach. What do you expect to see from him this season? Well, I think that, you know, we're, we're excited for Luke and his coaching staff. I think that Luke has been working very hard to figure out how to utilize all the pieces. And, um, you know, again, Luke's a winner, you know, he's been a winner as a player. He was a winner up at Golden State and he'll be a winner here too. And so I think it's, um, you know, people think that it's a problem when you have a lot of talent. No, we want a lot of talent. And I think a coach wants a lot of talent. And so um, he'll know how to put them in a, a winning position. And um, I think that uh, we're just excited to get it started. So. Um, Rob's really been talking to Luke a lot, so I let him really go into it. Yeah, we were we were up in the office uh, going over some training camp stuff the other day, and a lot of people have said, hey, this is one of the deepest rosters in the NBA. It's just a deep, and that is an extreme strength to us. I think if, if you look at the road to winning a championship, there's obviously a dominant team that's been in the finals the last four years and won three. And you have no shot at beating them unless you're deep and you can just keep coming at them in waves. And so that's an extreme strength for us. And I think Luke is perfectly positioned because he understands the modern player. He's young, he's played at a high level, won championships, has a great way of communicating with people with just a genuine air um, and keeping guys engaged. 
So we think that our roster and its strengths actually lines up perfectly with our coach and his strength.